Good afternoon. I'm thinking that the man in the iron mask is a story that is known to so many people, but for, for, for many years has not really been approached in film. Not since Leonardo DiCaprio uh, made a version of it in 1997. And I'm thinking that it should make a return, not necessarily to the big screen, but maybe on the internet. And how I would do the man in the eye mask would be, uh, I'd look to compare, you know, I'd like to so incorporate some fantasy elements. My idea for it would be actually that you get a shot of Paris, specifically the Eiffel Tower. And the Eiffel Tower is gold. We don't yet know why this is. But the camera zooms down across the streets of Paris and we can see that it's a little bit murky. You have to... Yes, some rather serious music play. And then I'd have it that there's two men who are sitting in a bistro. And it's got modern touches to it. This, this. They're wearing suits, these two men. But they have crosses on. You know, the, 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 We can gather that these are musketeers. And there is a barman who is a um, French African-American character. And he's meant to be a tribute to Alexandre Dumas, the author of The Man in the Iron Mask. In any event, these these two fellas are sitting in the bar. So this would be um, uh, uh, Pulthos and Athos. Our and Mrs. Female one will be coming along in due course. So during this conversation, they discuss how uh, Athos in particular discusses how Several weeks back, he was he was in a restaurant. So we flash to this, we cut to this restaurant where Athos was enjoying a meal, and Athos happened to have a group behind him of uh, two men and two women, and they were all discussing the concepts of the man in the iron mask and who the man in the iron mask is, and one of the people around the table uh, is. Uh, he, he puts forward a suggestion that the man in the iron mask was the Duke of Monmouth. So this then brings us into the story of the Duke of Monmouth, and we go and this looks in a very old setting. This does not look like a modern setting. Uh, once the story of the Duke of Monmouth is told, a lady then tells her story of what she, who she heard the man in the, the iron mask is. Uh, and her story is that it was uh, a, tre a, a treacherous priest. So we go on and we get around the stories about who, who they thought the man in the iron mask was. And in each story, we will see it visually. It will be a film. It will be a flashback, so to speak. I don't know if, you, if you'd like to call it that. The, the, we then return to the bar... <laughs> with the musketeers are drinking some some wine and Aramis shows up and we can gather that the reach Aramis I'm sorry is a uh, she, she has blonde hair she wears the hat the classic musketeer uh, hat and she has tattoos of crosses um, on her hands we can tell that Aramis is probably, as in the books, he's the most religious, and we assume that she is a relatively religious lady. And Aramis discusses of of why the man in the eye mask is being spoken about. This is why the last few weeks this has been this has come up in conversation, and it's gone through the French media. And, and Louis the Fourteenth is not happy about this, and the reason is is because of a man called Christo. This man called Christo has apparently leaked this information. The, uh, he has knowledge of who the man in the iron mask really is. Christo has then undergone yeah, another new identity. Those who are aware, Alexandre Dumas' other character, uh, there are, of course there are many, is the Count of Monte Cristo, a man called Edmund, Edmund Dantes, who, out of uh, a quest for vengeance, becomes the Count of Monte Cristo. We're not going to go into this, but it is safe to assume that this man is is more than prepared to change his identity once again. We then see a television in the bar, 
and Louis the Fourteenth is being interviewed on the television. Now, interesting about Louis the Fourteenth is he is shimmering gold. He's wearing gold. His skin is shimmering. He's almost godlike. And this is because he is the Sun King. We then cut to uh, more streets of Paris, and we cut to the Bastille. Now, this will look very much like the classic Bastille, but with a few modern touches. We'll then go through a montage in which they they release the man in the iron mask. So we will see the escape. We will see King Louis the Fourteenth captured, uh, and we will we will see visuals of who we believe to be D'Artagnan. The conclusion of this montage will be uh, Louis the Fourteenth put into the mask. Now, what's interesting about this mask is this is an iron mask, but it also is a form of not. Uh, it's not. It's not dissimilar to an artificial intelligence. It can actually change what material it needs to be. It is a. Uh, is almost an entity. It's not pleasant, and you see, you can see it. It, it, it was. It's. It's put on the the king, the sun king, and you see that the mask goes from a plastic to a to the iron mask, and on its on its transformation into to the iron mask, you see the king screaming. You see sun pouring through the plastic as it transforms. It's it's quite a, a sight to see earlier in the montage probably should have mentioned this earlier but doesn't matter we, we will see Philippe uh, Philippe would be uh, very interesting because when his the mask is removed from him the mask will be screaming when it is removed you can you can hear it, 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 it the, the noise of the mask being removed is is it's rather similar to the the eerie sound of Edge 2099 in Robocop the, the 1980s film Robocop uh, I highly recommend that movie I, but just go to YouTube and have a look and see the Edge 209 fight and it, 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 this robot is squealing like a, a horrific mechanical baby it, it, it's, it's rather bizarre and, and rather unpleasant uh, and that's exactly what this mask's like so what, when we see Philippe though he will uh, where where Louis uh, where Louis will be very gold, shimmering like the sun. Philippe's face will be dark. It will be like night. It'll be more like the moon and stars. It's like it's like his face is 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 space, really. Uh, another godlike element, but the reversal of the brother. That this is, um, and we are. It's safe to assume this is because at one point they would have looked alike, but after years of being within this uh, bizarre uh, this bizarre creature this bizarre whatever you want to call it that is the mask it, it, it's made Philippe's face become very uh, starry and dark and it will obviously take time for him to get his glow back and I think that's the I think that essentially covers it for now uh, essentially but to to, to explain this in, in short again, uh, essentially we have the story of the man in the iron mask, we have a, a 10 minute short film and we are going to explore within this fantasy fantasised up man in the iron mask with a tribute to Louis uh, to Alexandre Dumas excuse me, we are going to also show other versions of the man in the iron mask uh, based upon the fact that there was meant to be a man in the iron mask and there were many concepts of who this real man in the iron mask really was uh, one of these stories will actually explore the fact that, that um, will explore the concept that he may not even have worn an iron mask at all but a cloth so essentially, we have fiction which will dive into parts of reality before returning to the fiction. 
it's perhaps it, the best way to describe it is is like a Russian box element. To conclude this video, I, I stand by what I say. I really believe that the Manny AI mask has not been touched for years, and I think that it needs a really unique approach. And I think if if that was well received, I think that there's other stories that could be done. Perhaps a, a, a Three Musketeers prequel would definitely be in order, or a very short film where you get a glimpse of Christo on the run. But I will leave that now. And uh, thank you for your time and listening.